Okay, let's now look at some validation that we want to run. So to do that, let's just play around with test object. Let me just copy and paste some code in because this is just some boring code that's not really <laughs> interesting. But anyway, so I create a class or I define a class of test object. I create an instance. I'm not setting any parameters on this test object instance. And then I'm just hitting save. If it saves correctly, I'm just printing saved. If it saves with an error, I'm printing the error. So not very complex stuff at all. And now if I was to run this, there we go, world is printed out, and then uh, then saved is printed out because we've saved an empty test object. But let's say I wanted to add some validation. I wanted to add the validation that whenever somebody saves a test object, they must specify the foo attribute. So we can solve that via some cloud code. So let me look at the parse server that we've got here. So if we look at main.js, what I want to do now if we look at test object in triggers, you can see I've already added some code. Let me zoom in a bit more here. So I've added this in a folder called triggers because I want this code to trigger whenever I perform some activity on an object. So there's a couple of different triggers you can have. This trigger I've got right now is before save. So we can say parse.cloud before save of test object. So before you actually save any instance of this test object to the database, run this code here. Okay, and again, we have a request and a response. So the first thing we can do is we want to actually get the object which we're trying to save. So we can do request.object. And then I say request.object, which is the test object, I want to get the foo attribute. And see that? That's not. So if there is nothing returned, if it's null or undefined, if the foo attribute is null or undefined on the object that's trying to be saved, then send back an error on the response with perhaps a useful error message, foo must be saved. Or if everything's fine, just, just let it continue, just response.success. And this will actually then continue with the saving process. If you return an error on the before save, then it won't continue with saving the object. The object won't be saved to the database. So that's one of the triggers that we have. Now, if, if I go to main.js, what I want to do is let me just uncomment that one. And again, because we've uncommented it, we want to change something in our cloud code in our parse server. We need to git commit it and git push it. So let's go into our terminal here. Let me clear, gain, git add, but we don't want to add index.js, we want to add cloud main.js, then git commit. We'll save that, and then again, git push Heroku master. Now when implementing cloud code, it actually makes a lot more sense to run this locally on your machine, just so that your cycle can be a lot faster. You won't have to constantly check stuff in and push it to Heroku. But just because I've been pushing to Heroku for everything else so far, it makes sense for me to continue to push to Heroku. But really, if I was developing with this for real, I would just be running past server locally, making sure everything works. And once I'm sure the cloud code works, then I would push it to the server. Okay, so now that's pushed. If I then run this code again, because I haven't set a foo object, I should expect to see an error printed out on the screen. So now let me run it. There we go. Now it returns an error with a code 141. And there's the message which I returned from the server, which is foo must be set. So theoretically, if I did test object set foo to moo, and I cleared and I ran again. You can then say pass validation and it just let the object save to the database and return the success. So that's how you can perform validation on the server side. It's by listening or by hooking into the before save trigger on every object out there or and on every class that you want to add validation to. Getting the object which you're trying to save 
and just whatever functions you wanna, whatever checks you wanna add to this class, you can add it here in this code. If it all passes, you return a response.success. If it fails for whatever reason, you return response.error.